My name is Rob Nelson and I am the author and creator of SageBox. SageBox is a library that allows you to program CNC++ GUI type applications, utilities, etc. as easy as a scripting language but with the full power of compiled C++ without losing any efficiency. And the best part of it is, is that you can do it all procedurally without using any events or event callbacks if you don't want to. SageBox is really about creative development and rapid prototyping. The idea that in an ad hoc or creative way that we can add a button, a slider, a window, a graph, or whatever to our program all without changing a bunch of event-driven code or structure. And to me, that's what keeps programming fun. Like this program I just wrote here in just a few seconds, that really was just about having fun and playing around. And I'm going to add a couple more things to it after I show you a little bit more about SageBox. The examples shown here, most of which are available in the GitHub repository, so that you can create anything from simple utility-like programs to real-time graphics, all the way to full-blown applications using AVX multi-threading technology and the GPU. Since SageBox is just a library, it doesn't have a runtime kernel or engine that's going to slow your program down. Also, it has a strict adherence to standard types. That way you can just program the way you want to program without having to change it or adapt to new types just to use the SageBox library. Now let me show you a couple examples of using SageBox, starting with a simple, already existing console application that I'm going to add SageBox to to give it some GUI capability to visualize our data. The coding examples I'm about to show for SageBox might go a little bit fast since it's more of an overview than a tutorial, so just pause the frame as I explain the code to see more about what it does, and also look for the other tutorials on the YouTube channel where I take a slower pace. Here's a basic C++ console mode program that does a sort. These two lines assign a unique value to every member of the array. This lambda here prints out the values to the console mode window, and this print values prints it before the sort, and this one prints it after the sort. So when we run it, we have our before array and our nicely sorted after array. Now let's look at a version of this program using the SageBox tools to graph this visually by adding just six lines of code. All I have to do is uncomment these lines of code using the SageBox library and then add the new parameter which is the window to the print values function and we're good to go. So now let me explain what these six lines of code do with the SageBox library. These two lines create two new windows for our before and after graphs. These two lines create a color and then draw a line based on the position of our element. And this writes the same message that we had before but in our window. And in our print value calls, we've added a parameter to pass the window to the print values function. And the exit button brings up a window that says the program is over so we can click OK and end the program. So let's change num values to 1024 and then run it. So now we have a nice before and after visual display. We still have the text in the console mode window, but it can be pretty daunting to look at all that data. So it's nice to have the visual graph, and we're able to do it by adding just six lines of code to the program that was already there. So here it is again. This is a really good example of adding SageBox to a program that already exists, in this case a console mode program. We can do Windows Win main programs with exactly the same code with no changes. And I'm going to show that in other videos. But right now, let me show you another example. Now I'm going to show how we can make this program in eight lines of code using the SageBox tools as a console mode program, and then I'm going to make a WinMain program and copy this code in with no changes and run it as a Windows program. First I'm going to do a couple of includes, including SageBox.h, and then after declaring my main, I'm going to create what's called a text widget where I can display that big number that I showed in the preview. And I'm going to set a font of 50 and a foreground color of cyan. And then I'm going to set a dev slider, which creates a slider in the dev window and automatically places it underneath the text widget. And I'm going to set a range of 0 to 10,000. Then I'm going to enter the get event loop, which puts the thread asleep until I get an event. Then if the value slider has been moved, I'm going to put out the value of the slider to the text widget. And then I'm going to create a string so that I can put the value out to both the console mode and also the SageBox debug window, which is going to come in handy when I convert it to a Windows program. So when we run it, when I move the slider, it prints out to both the console window and the SageBox debug window, as well as our dev window, which has our slider and our nice big number. The SageBox debug window is nice because we can use it at any time instead of the console window, but also we can hide the window if we don't want to use it, so it's just kind of always there for us. And we can also press the Terminate Program button to close the program down if we're not sure what's going on. Now let's add some color to the text. I can insert the word cyan in braces, or C, but let's stick with cyan. And so when I run it, you can see that the cyan is in the SageBox debug window, but in the console window, it just prints cyan. So let's change that. All I have to do is use the SageBox CanIO functions instead of the standard Cout function, and then it will print my color to the console window, which you might have noticed I changed the yellow to make it different from the big cyan text appearing in the dev window. 
Let me show you something else about the dev window. We can add a button to the dev window to allow us to close the program gracefully. Here all I have to do is just add dev window close as a call after our get event and it will add the window and allow us to close the program when I press the close button on the dev window. Now let me show you how I'm going to change this program into a Windows WinMain program without changing any of the code. First I'm going to copy the code and then I'm going to create a standard Windows project and let it put it in the default directory. So when we first come up with our template given to us by Microsoft Studio, it has a lot of code in it. I'm going to delete all of it except for the WinMain entry declaration. And then I'm going to copy in the console mode program that I made earlier without changing it at all. But first I need to put in the paths for the SageBox.h and SageBox library real quickly. We could do this in the source code by adding the direct path and a pragma for the library, but I might as well put it in the project declaration. So now that MSVC knows where everything is, I can just include SageBox.h, compile it, and run it. So now we have exactly the same program we had before, except that we don't have a console mode window because this is now a WinMain Windows program. And that shows how easy it is to move back and forth between Windows and console mode. When you're running a Windows program, SageBox figures it out, or if you're running a console mode program, SageBox figures that out as well. Now let's return to that simple mouse draw program I wrote in the introduction and add a few things to it. I want to add some color to our program, so I'm going to add three lines of code. The first line of code I'm going to add is simply going to clear the screen. We can use RGB values directly or variables, and in this case I'm going to use the Pantone colors black and dark blue. The second line I'm going to add is just a simple variable declaration called circle color, and it's just an RGB color with the three values red, green, and blue as integers. And the third line I'm going to add just states that if the mouse is clicked, then go ahead and set the color based on a random hue. The from SL function just gives us a nice bright color based on the hue that we give it from 0 to 360. And now when we run it, by just adding two more lines of code in a variable declaration, we have a much more colorful drawing program. Now I want to show what a widget is in SageBox. A widget is something that you can call into your window or as an external window that has a lot of functionality. So here, for example, I'm opening up a window with a default font to 25, and I'm setting a counter, and then while the window is open, I'm just going to print Hello World and an iteration number. So when we run it, we have our Hello World and a nice big font counting away, but let's add some color to that. So to do that, I just need to include the ColorWheelWidget.h file, and then declare our ColorWheelWidget object, and I'm going to put it at 1010 to kind of put it over, and then I can just set the foreground color of the window to whatever we're getting from the ColorWheel widget. And so now when we run it with just two lines of code, we now have this color wheel embedded in the upper right hand corner of our window. And when we move it, it changes the color of our Hello World text. Now let's look at it in a way where we can show it as its own window without being embedded in our main window. So to do that, I'm going to change color wheel widget to color selector. And then I'm going to pretty much leave it as is, but I'm going to add an option called pop up so that it'll pop up in its own window. And we don't really need the opt, so that's kind of optional actually. And so when we run it, we have a new color selector with more options in its own window with pretty much the same two lines of code. So let's add another widget, just uh, in this case an LCD widget that we can use for emulation and that sort of thing. And I'm going to call it LCD widget. I'm going to put it over to the right at say 500 comma 10. And then all I have to do is call the set value function to have it display in our main loop. And so now we have a program with two widgets running, all with just four lines of code. And so that shows how simple SageBox can be and how powerful it can be all at the same time. So that's a basic introduction overview of SageBox. And there are other videos and tutorials on YouTube that show how SageBox works more in depth for its various features and functions. SageBox is really just an alpha at this point, kind of working to the beta and then final release stage. So it's pretty powerful now, but it's expected to grow a lot in the next year, including cross-platforming it to Linux and over to Android. And so it's a free product, so please consider donating to the project so that we can continue to make it better and better. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I will see you in other videos.